Realistic simulation of the effects of a nuclear blast in the city. The shockwave is the most destructive part of a nuclear weapon. So the most simple type of nuclear weapon to make is called a gun type weapon and this is the kind of weapon that america dropped on hiroshima so that was like the name of it was called little boy and basically these ones are long they're like they're like a they're not a round type bomb these gun type weapons are more of a uh, torpedo or submarine shaped uh bomb uh, and basically what it does what it has is it has a, a ring a ring of highly enriched uranium over here on this side and then on the other side there's a plug of uh, highly enriched uranium okay and so remember when neutrons uh, are being thrown into these atoms of uranium-235 they start to fission that's undergo a nuclear reaction where the atoms start splitting and so basically what has to happen is if you get these two chunks of uranium-235 too close to each other they'll start to uh they'll start to fission having a nuclear reaction and then they'll blow apart so that um they won't be able to get enough fission going to sustain a chain a nuclear chain reaction that's really going to create a huge explosion so that's why you can't just like move slowly move the uranium over the plug into the cylinder into the round thing and uh, because when you're moving it over and it's getting closer, that will start releasing uh, neutrons and it'll start a nuclear reaction, but it'll only be enough to like um, make everything expand and get really hot and like uh, turn into gas, the uranium turn into gas. So how they overcome this is they actually have an explosion uh, that shoots the uh, plug of uranium in the gun type weapon like down a shaft, right? So they have a normal like TNT explosion that then shoots this plug of uranium down super fast. And then it, you know, goes like, you know, like a, it's going hundreds, <laughs> it's going thousands of miles an hour, right? This little plug across a, a six foot gap. And when it, when this little plug embeds itself in the ring of uranium, and it does it really quick like that, so it moved so quickly it was able to not fission much um, during that, you know, millionth of a second that it took for it to move that distance. Then that will be, like, the plug will actually be inside, the uranium plug will be inside the uranium ring, and that uh, is actually what starts the nuclear chain reaction, um, is moving the two pieces of unstable uh, uranium together fast enough um and compressed enough as well uh so the bomb is made simply by moving the two pieces of metal uh close enough together that causes the nuclear chain reaction the issue of making a nuclear bomb is how do you get uranium two pieces of unstable uranium close enough together without having them fission so uh early and and, en and enough to be maintain and sustain a nuclear chain reaction to get a big explosion you know you'll get a small explosion if you don't do it fast enough but in order to get you know a really long sustained nuclear chain reaction that delivers a traditional nu nuclear bomb then you've got to have those two uranium pieces being moved together at like just like Blitzkrieg, just blistering speed moving together, then they won't be able to have much fission uh, before they start and sustain a nuclear chain reaction. Basically, guys, what I'm saying is that 
moving two pieces of uranium that are unstable together is the main thing that creates a nuclear weapon of the fission type. So in order to get uranium for a nuclear weapon, weapons grade uranium, it needs to be very pure uranium-235, because this is the kind, the type of uranium that can have a nuclear chain reaction, not uranium-238. So what happens is they get a what's called a centrifuge, and they turn the uranium metal into a gas by heating it up really hot and put it in the centrifuge and spin it around really fast. And when they spin it, spin it around the isotopes, the uranium-238 and the uranium-235 separate. And then they're able to filter it and keep on filtering it through more and more centrifuges, centrifuges until they have about 90% purity of uh, uranium-235. So uranium that is like not as pure, uranium-235, it can still be used for a nuclear weapon, but just for like America, for example, like America only uses 90% uh, uranium-235, highly enriched uranium for their nuclear weapons, okay? So like premium grade, the type of stuff that they're using, you know, in, you know, not terrorists, but uh, countries that have nuclear weapons programs that are advanced, you know, they're enriching or purifying their uranium up to 90% of uranium-235, which is weapons grade nuclear materials so there isn't really that much preventing people from creating nuclear bombs except for obtaining that uranium obtaining that uranium is such a difficult process um, it was the cost of like half of the funding for the original guys who did the uh, uh, the Trinity project over at uh, you know the, the Manhattan Project and then the, the Trinity bomb, that was the original test of the uh, first atomic weapon. Like half of the funding that the US government did to creating that weapon was just going into uh, obtaining the uranium-235 for the weapon. So that goes to show how difficult it is to get uranium-235 and uh, to process it from natural uranium so how nuclear bombs work is you're splitting atoms and when the atom breaks apart when it splits it releases like a lot of a lot of energy a lot of energy comes out when the atom breaks in half and so how they're breaking atoms in half is uranium-235 is an unstable isotope of uranium and so there's these things called neutrons and when you add too many neutrons like you shoot neutrons out of a neutron generator and then you have too many neutrons uh, present in the cell or the it's kind of like a cell but of the atom of uh, of uranium 235 then it starts it splits the atom and when that atom splits then more neutrons are released and so that now there's more neutrons right and then the other uranium 235 neutrons or atoms that are also in that area they'll also break apart when those neutrons from the first atom breaking apart then enter the next ones right and they keep on releasing more and more neutrons and this creates a nuclear chain reaction of all of these atoms of uranium-235 splitting in half and when that happens that's a nuclear explosion uh, the amount of energy that's released when atoms split in half is insane <laughs>
So we're talking 57 million of those 2,000 pound piles. Um, that's how much uh, explosive power. 57 million 2,000 pound piles of TNT is in this bomb called the Tsar Bomba by Russia. Okay, so this is our Bomba, most powerful weapon ever detonated, but the original design for it was for actually twice as much of an explosive yield, but because they wanted the pilot to have a higher chance of survival, they uh, made it half as powerful uh, so that he would have a better chance of uh, living after dropping the bomb. Um, contrary to popular belief, uh, States or nations, countries releasing a nuclear weapon is not the main threat. It's actually terrorists releasing a nuclear weapon. All a terrorist really needs to do, the barrier to entry for a terrorist to getting a nuclear weapon is obtaining the uranium, obtaining the, obtaining the highly enriched uranium, or there's another material that is very similar to uranium called plutonium that can also be used to um, create a nuclear bomb. So <clears throat> there are governments who most governments, most all countries have nuclear power plants. And these nuclear power plants um, contain uh, uranium enriching facilities, okay? And also the processed fuel that is used, the spent uranium fuel that is used in power plants can also be reprocessed to easily make uh, weapons, grade, weapons grade plutonium, uh, which is the same thing basically as highly enriched uranium for explosives, it has the same function. Um, so the way that a terrorist would get these is basically a state that does uh, enrichment, you know, would have it stolen from them, or a power plant would have it stolen from them, the uranium, or when it was being moved, the spent fuel from a power plant, it was being moved, you know, in, in cars to a new location, um, you know, it was hijacked or something like that. So, or, you know, a rogue state, you know, who has a vendetta against another country, you know, they could they could get uranium to like a terrorist organization, you know, it's say, you know, like their excuse once the bomb happened or whatever would be like, oh, they stole it from us or something. Right. But they could actually just, you know, instead of actually having, you know, for example, Iran shooting a nuclear missile, you know, it would be like one of the terrorist groups in their country and they you know, supplied that terrorist group, you know, covertly with highly enriched uranium to make a bomb. And that could be like, you know, by proxy, not actually the nation actually doing it itself, but, you know, by proxy through like a terrorist group or something, um, you know, having nuclear terrorism. So this is a, a major threat that people don't think exists, but it really does, you know. You think uh, like plane hijackings, you know, like World Trade Center, school shootings, things like this is terrorism. Okay, well, wait till nuclear terrorism starts because it's actually insane that it's never happened yet. Because, I mean, it's it's really, as you have seen in this video, it's not that difficult to make this happen. It, somebody just has got to get, with bad intentions, has got to get a hold of uranium-235 or plutonium.